Hey everybody, it's the coach, and this is Madden 19 on EA Sports. We are just moments away from kickoff, and we've got a good one on tap between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime, but kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis. Thank you, Coach. From beautiful South Florida, there's a look at Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. The scene a few moments ago, here it is. It's unlike any other in sport as both teams made their way out of the tunnel. These folks are fired up as their guys are ready to do battle between the Cincinnati Bengals and the Miami Dolphins. Hi, everyone. Brandon Gunn, Charles Davis. Charles, you look at the Dolphins as they interplay in this one. Well, they've lost three straight here, and it goes without saying, I guess, they could certainly use a win. And how do they get a win? Because they've lost three straight, I think it's paramount that they get a fast, clean start to this game. Meanwhile, for the Bengals here, they too were losers last week, so they're also hoping to get back in the win column. Something's got to give in this one, right? Both teams want to start a new streak and they both want it to be a victory. This should be a fun one. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Here come the Bengals now to take over. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way and he sees himself an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator said right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. And not a whole lot doing there as so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there and it'll bring up a second and nine. To throw on second down. Pierce to mix it on the check down. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Call it a three-yard game, and that'll bring up a third down. They've got good playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. I don't know what happened last week to, to really hurt their performance and, and hold down their production, but I would dare say that this week in practice, there's a lot of talk about how they're going to increase their proficiency. And that was a good start, getting the playmakers involved. You mentioned that to me pregame. That's what they did there. Yeah, I think a lot of people think the coaching staff really gets on them, and that's how they motivate them. Most of these guys are self-motivated. They have a lot of pride in their performance. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First time they've hooked up here. Good for 17 at a first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Play fake here on first down. Open man is Uzama. 
And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Let's go! Brad, 38! On third down, Pierce. Brought in here by Tyler Eifert. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. His first catch, good for eight and a first down. How about the start throwing the football? Four for four on this opening drive. Oh, he's slinging it. And oftentimes when you talk about slinging it, you're thinking about a guy throwing it all over the yard, not necessarily accurately. In this case, though, He's honing in on his targets, and he's delivering. Yeah, the opening script, however, they drew it up for this first drive, going to plan so far. Mixon with a first down carry. They're able to push forward for about four down of the 37. The numbers for Mixon last week, 12 carries, 57 yards. Well, watching the film, we saw that things clicked pretty well for them in the running game last week. No reason to change in my mind. Continue to try and run the football. Give it to him early and often in hopes of breaking down the defense so some bigger gains result as the game goes on. Looking to throw on second down. Pierce. He finds Ross right side. It's complete. And he will take it on in for a Bengals touchdown. In for the score. And the Bengals are going to take a first quarter lead. That touchdown, certainly a welcome sight. Remember, they were shut out last week. They talked to us about getting early momentum. Well, here you go in the opening quarter. Got to rebuild confidence because when you get shut out, I don't care how strong you are mentally, you've got to take a step back and say, okay, what just happened here? Because nothing that we were doing worked well enough to get into the end zone, and that's a nice confidence-building drive when it puts it in the end zone to give them an opportunity. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Danny Amendola on the return. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. So here come the Dolphins now as they get set to take over on offense. As we get a peek at their dynamic signal caller hailing from Mississippi State, it's Dak Prescott. Okay, I thought there was something to build on in last week's game by his performance. I thought he played fairly well overall. The, the numbers won't knock your socks off. Two touchdown passes and an interception. The bottom line, though, they lost. Yeah. How does he eliminate that one interception, continue to take care of the ball, and maybe increase the number of times he puts the ball in the end zone with a receiver? They go play action here on first down. Oh, he's going to take a shot right away. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice, getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. Line of scrimmage, again, the 25, second and 10. Throwing again, Prescott on second and 10. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. Here's Cincinnati defensively right now in the NFL ranked number 12 against the pass. And they've been very good this year against the pass, currently holding on to a top 10 ranking at number 10. And I'm struggling a little bit trying to really categorize this crew. They're top 10 in the league against the pass, but the bottom half of the league and sacking the quarterback. That doesn't make sense. Imagine if this group ever put pressure on the QB. 
they'd easily move into the top five. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. And it's caught by Parker. And they pick up 25. It's a convert on third. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down. After the touchdown on the other side, how will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot in the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? First carry of the game for Christian McCaffrey. Brought down, but after we saw a flashy little move, stopped short of the 40. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Now look, that wasn't a huge gain, but those are the types of carries I think they were missing in their loss last week. They couldn't get him going on the ground. Did you get the same feeling I did during our meetings that they kind of regretted that he didn't touch the Absolutely. ball? Absolutely. You know, hey, he should have touched him more last week. They weren't going to make that same mistake. Offense. They've taken care of that early. So that'll back him up five. Still second down. Now after the false start, here's second and seven. They'll run here with the launch. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot... That didn't happen there. Hey. There go. On third down, it's Prescott. He'll drop it off to McCaffrey, and he'll get it down here to the 43. It's a gain of five, and that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion, and what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. A very good starting field position for the Bengals here as they come up first and 10. Let's go! Brian 38! Brian 38! Cut! They'll run it now out of the gun. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Tackle made by Thomas Davis. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Spinning away, and he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Any team that runs the toss and runs it successfully, that means they win the battle on the edges. That means you seal the edge in order to let your back get to the corner. They got it done there for a very nice game. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Throwing on first down. Pierce. And that one is incomplete. And it also concludes quarter number one. One quarter in the books. Seven nothing is our score. And we'll be back to South Florida after this. They've got it second and ten to start things out. 
Line of scrimmage again the 37 as they line up second and 10. to throw again. Pierce looking for his tight end. Eifert and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rashad Jones. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. It's almost like you can see the look of frustration on his face. Four interceptions last week. We talked about it all week. What did he do wrong? And another one here in the first half. And you can understand the frustration. You actually feel his pain a little bit. But the worst thing he can do is what you're seeing right now. Showing the other team that he's frustrated. All they're going to do is double their First efforts to offense. make him even more frustrated. He's got to gather himself, compose himself, and keep fighting. Well, he talked a lot about erasing that loss last week, getting back in the win column. Still we'll see down. how he responds. A false start backs him up five. First and 15. McCaffrey following the penalty. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Holding offense. So a decent game. Still first for not on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. And that'll be incomplete. Devontae Parker, the intended receiver, and it's second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Prescott, and this will be incomplete. Sometimes the coverage is so good, no matter what you're doing on offense, you just can't shake anyone free. They try their best to find someone open, but they took away every passing alley, every angle, and shut the play down. Third and long for Prescott. They'll set up the screen to McCaffrey, and he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It's a loss of a full three yards, and it brings up fourth down. Well, you can see what they wanted to do. They wanted to set up the screen there, but it got blown up. It's hard to run that play if you're not getting a lot of pressure at the quarterback because the space doesn't open up. They were able to read that one and slow it down and stop it before they could get a first down. On fourth down, Matt Hawk to punt it away. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. This is brought in at the 21. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Bengals will take over here first and 10. John Ross and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. You look at the numbers for him and 1,000 yards, obviously well within his sights, barring injury. He will get there. The question, will he get there in this game? Well, he would love to. Duh, right? Of course he would. But, you know, watching him play this year, we often talk about defenses, you know, allocating extra resources to try and stop a guy of his ilk, right? But you know what else kicks in? His pride to say, okay, I don't care how many you throw in my direction, I'm still going to find a way to get open. I will use different moves. I will move against formation. I will come underneath routes and try and run through some people and kind of get natural picks in order to work his way open. He wants to get that 1,000, and he doesn't want any less passes to go. come to his direction. Throwing again on second and 10. Pierce flush to his right. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. And there we saw rolling right out of the pocket. Maybe his momentum taking him toward that sideline led him a little too far. Yeah, that is difficult, isn't it? Plus, you're closing down your space, right? You're your... In a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by David Anderson. And they get the football. They'll set up shop at their own 49-yard line. He's had his interception woes early in his rookie season, but 
Sometimes that happens. There are great examples of guys in the past that have had those same struggles early. You are so correct. And what the team and organization is hoping, we're going to see these woes now. But later, when we're helping him with his Hall of Fame speech, we'll remember his rookie year and how things began. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they are hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. Tackled by Jordan Willis. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Prescott from the gun on third. And over the middle, this is Parker. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. On first down, this is McCaffrey. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and 12. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. On the left side, this is Stills. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. His first catch, good for 16 and a first. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. No gain on the play there. Second down. Doubling this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat? And we said, nah, man, you're just a whole lot of guy. He is well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And he gets it down close to the 10-yard line. Eight yards on the ground there, and now they're looking at a third and two. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. On third and short, Drake. And he will have the first down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Well, that was big right there because they're in the bottom five in the league and converting on third down. They needed that pickup in a big way. There were two things they said they wanted to win in this game. One, the turnover battle, and the second, third down conversions. So they got one there. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. A great effort there. His ninth touchdown of the season. And the Dolphins are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there. And they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how are we going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And the last play on the drive, the touchdown run from Christian McCaffrey. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow, you can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game-tied now. So you're not protecting a lead. So you're not playing that way. you got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. So that throw good for four. It's second down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. To throw on second down. Pierce. 
Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll send you up to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there, and he'll have stats and scores from a busy Sunday in the NFL. On first and ten, Pierce. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one who has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Ohio! Ohio! Come on, let's go! Three and 38! Three and 38! Ohio! 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 Cut. Throwing again. Pierce, polluting the pressure right. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. To throw on third down. Pierce got a man. It's Ross complete. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. This quarterback now 8 of 15 through the air, but it's first and 10 here. Come on, let's go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. David Emerson able to bring him down. Now the Bengals urging everybody to get back to the line of scrimmage. Ohio! Ohio! They'll run it now out of the gun. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. And now before this first down play, we're going to get a timeout here. As he'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. A first chance in the red zone for the Bengals now. It's first and 10 from the 12. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to get him inside the five here, just inside the five to about the four. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. Ohio! Ohio! Looking to throw on second down. Pierce. Green's open, and he's got it for a Bengal touchdown. A.J. Green, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Bengals are in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front. And now, see on the sideline, special teams defense scrambling, saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Dolphins' offense now working their way back onto the field. You know, Charles, season winding down, time to maybe look ahead to the offseason. What do you see these guys going after either in the draft or free agency? Well, with the season that they're having, 
just about every position is up for grabs right now. No one is really safe, but the focal point's always the quarterback position. And he may be auditioning to try and stay with his own current team. I think he's auditioning for the rest of the league to try and find a spot because I think this team is looking for a new quarterback. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Ball on the 30, they'll come up with a second and five. A second down throw for Prescott. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Parker. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as the clock will stop with 34 seconds to go before halftime. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Prescott looks to throw on first. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Prescott on first down. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're able to get this one past the 30 to the 25-yard line. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Boswell's kick is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So the three points here, they're still down, but they put somewhat of a dent into that lead going into the break. Anything helps when you're trying to chip away at a lead, but they do know that they're going to need a little bit better effort in the second half. This one taken from the seven. And he'll take this one near the 25, call it the 26-yard line. Final play of the first half, barring a penalty, as they come up on first and ten. Final shot before break. Pierce going deep down field for Ross. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. So we have reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Bengals out in front as we go up to Orlando now. You sure you're ready for the third quarter? Need to use a bathroom or anything? All right, cool. Let's go. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. Jakeem Grant now to return. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes the Dolphins now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk? when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission. Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. First down, Prescott. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he'll be brought down just shy of midfield at the 49-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Now Balazs. Oh, and now he bowls him over. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 12 yards there, and the Dolphins have a first down. And that's the big fella's M.O. right there. Running through tackles, keeping the sticks moving forward. And this defense, if you don't bring 11 guys to the ball to try and get him on the ground, he's going to keep making runs like that. I feel the press box shaking every time he touches the rock. 
Another run, this time McCaffrey. And he'll get four here down to the 35-yard line. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. They stay on the ground. McCaffrey again. Vontez perfect, the one to get him down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Here we go, kill, kill. Here we go, 48. 26, 26. Prescott from the gun. Wide open receiver complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Throw it. Prescott. The linebacker Preston Brown there to knock that one away. And that's what he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Back to the ground attack here. It's McCaffrey. Whoosh. And he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. 18 yards there, and it'll be a first and goal. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there, I'm just... One big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Here's Prescott. And Stills has got it. Touchdown, Miami. Kenny Stills, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Dolphins are in for six. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? 
the time in between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. Illegal block in the back. Return team. Yeah, this is going to put them back with a not great down. field position. So they really got zero benefit at all, right? Sometimes you can absorb a penalty when you get a big return. Then the penalty brings it back, but you still have great field position. As you pointed out, not in this case. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. First down, Pierce. To the left side here for Eifert. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. Great way to start the drive. 20 big ones at a first down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. To throw on second down. Pierce escaping the pressure right. And caught. Right side. Green. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first Here down. We go. Throwing on first down, Pierce. And that's going to wind up incomplete. However, we do have a flag down. Let's check in with our referee. Pass interference, defense. So they saw the contact the before down. the ball arrived. Penalty flag for pass interference. And trying to avoid pass interference is so difficult. You're trying to slow down these skilled receivers, and somehow, some way, they make plays on the football, and sometimes you're there too soon. here losing yardage back to the 16. It's a loss of a yard there and now second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because let's face it you can't be predictable but the execution was a little lacking on this one right they might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. Looking to throw on second down. Pierce. Yeah, quick throw here. That's complete. And he fumbled it. It's on the ground. And the Dolphins have got it. A 
Well, let's see now, Charles. That's seven turnovers between last week and this week. Three here in this game, four in last week's game. You know I do my research, right? And I go all the way back to the best coaches that have ever been in this game. And all of them started with ball security in some form or another, understanding that taking care of the ball was the key to winning games. They can't believe what they're seeing right now because they spend all this time on it with the fundamentals, taking care of it, tucking it away, and they're not doing it. on third down. They've been good. Three for four thus far. This is third and seven. Come on, let's go! Third and They'll try to get the run game going. This is Mixon. And he'll get this one down to about the ten-yard line. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. Partner, when you're not able to run the ball successfully, it really messes everything up for an offense because no longer are you setting the tone and dictating the game. If you do want to throw the ball, play action's kind of gone out the window because they don't respect the run. And last but not least, you don't get to dictate it all when you want to throw the football. And that really hurts you as an offense. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. So following the failed try on fourth down, back now in Miami. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. And an alley to run. He's at the 50. 30. Past the 20. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. A great play there. An even 90 yards. And the Dolphins are able to grow their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, right? right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one taken just inside the 10. Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. And out now, here come the Bengals. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches and they use the term complimentary football? <laughs> Offense take care of the defense, defense. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by the linebacker, Manti Teo. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. That is now seven. Seven interceptions between last week and this week. Three in this game, four a week ago. And I saw the head coach write on his play sheet, make a little note. I hope he's writing self-scout. Bring in the guys that scout games for you with a different eye and watch him and see what's going on and maybe they can pick up what the flaws are and hopefully they can correct them. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Here's Prescott. Looking sideline incomplete. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, 
and get set as we resume action. And that will wind up just short. He had it online. It ran out of gas at the end. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and ten. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. His big tight end, Tyler Eifert, the intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. And that incompletion was caused by the defense. I think they were trying to get one into the middle of the field, trying to find a receiver there. But they were in zone defense. And what are the advantages of being in zone? Eyes and reaction. Eyes meaning all eyes are on the quarterback and able to react when he throws the football and rally to that spot. And that's exactly what happened there. Able to get there and knock it away. Ohio! Ohio! Flex round! Flex round! Cut. Back to the air on second down. Pierce. Green's got it over the middle. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A good pick up there at 22. Ohio! Ohio! On first and 10, Pierce to mix it on the check down. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll make it a second down. They'll look to throw again. They'll set up the screen here to mix it. A nice move he had, but can't break away. And he's brought down just inside the 30. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 12 yards that time and a Cincinnati first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Over the middle complete, it's green. And they work this near the five, he'll be stopped at the six. 12 yards on back-to-back -back plays there, and that's another first down. Ohio, Ohio! They'll give it to Mixon, and he's gonna get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. From the two now, second and goal. From the gun, Pierce dumps it off to Mixon. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. They call that a loss of six yards. And it's third down now. They've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Come on, let's go! Looking to throw. Pierce. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Bengal TD. As his guys are in for six. And the Bengals have got it back to a one-score game. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They had the touchdown they needed. But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know. It doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> 
And out come the Dolphins now. And last time out, another missed field goal, so maybe their confidence wavering a little bit right now in the kicking game. And I'm with you on that. I think at this stage, they'd love to not run him back out there in a tough situation. But let's face it, they may have to. So right now, the head coach is talking to the offense coordinator and saying, call this game like we're going to put it in the end zone. Let's try and take the field goal out of it. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Now, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Here we go, 46, 46. Time for a break. We're back to see what happens after this. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. On second down, McCaffrey. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Balage. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. Whistles now and a timeout. So defensively, they burn it here with 151 left. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Here's Matt Hawk now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fielded just inside the 20. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. The Bengal offense now gets set to head back out onto the field. Things are starting to move in the right direction. They get the touchdown last drive, then their defense gets them the football back. Yeah, now they have a chance to get the lead if they can put something together here. And I'm eager to see how they decide to do it. Do they want to be methodical, or do they want to take the big strike and go after it right now? Back to throw. Flushed out right. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd. See if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. back to throw and he comes back with one complete and he'll get it up to the 33 yard line they'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down they'll get to the line here but remember it's also third down this is where of course it's good to have a veteran quarterback under center you would just be able to put on one of those blood pressure clips and nothing would be different for him he's done it many times before expects to get it accomplished again and he's going to have the first down yardage to the 35. he'll grab three yards on the play taking it himself for the first down He'll look 
to throw. Rolling to his right. Oh, a scrap for the football, and he's going to come down with it. 18 yards on that one, and the Bengals are moving. First down. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Ross. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. to throw. He finds Ross right side. It's complete. 60 catches for him now on the year. This last one, a first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Ohio! Ohio! On first down, Pierce. On the crossing route, complete. It's Ross. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop him. A good pick up there, 22. Well, Charles, a game and a decision that people may be talking about tomorrow for sure. Had a chance at a long field goal there at the end to try and tie it. They elect to not kick it, and they lose the game. And I think what we'd all love to see is that little slip of paper that the special teams coach handed to head coach before the game that said, this is where our kicker is good from today. This is where he feels confident because that might be the absolute mark that tells us, okay, Maybe we have to run more offense because maybe he doesn't feel good about kicking it from this distance. So for Miami, it's a fourth win of the campaign as they get to 4-10 and ten on the year. And they'll get to stay home again next week as the New York Jets come to town. Meanwhile, for Cincinnati, they've plummeted now to 3-11. and 11. And they'll try to get back on the beam next week as they'll head to Cleveland to take on the Browns. And for Charles Davis and our entire crew here at EA Sports, I'm Brandon Gordon saying so long, everybody.